Hello and welcome to this build guide video for Kerbal Space Program 2. So in this video we are going to be building this which is my attempt at a simple F-18 fighter jet. Um, now we are actually going to be using this plane in my For Science video series to do the curb wide tour missions. Um, however, in its current configuration it wouldn't actually be 100% suitable for that because we would need to add a couple of parts like the uh, lander cannon and so forth. Um, so this video is actually going to stand as more of a kind of standalone build guide uh, with regards to how to not only build an F-18 but also how to build aeroplanes in general uh, because we are going to be going into relative depth on how to actually balance the plane such as getting the control surfaces in exactly the right position and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, like I say, we're going to be building this F-18 today, so if you are playing in sandbox mode, obviously you can just get straight into the actual build itself. However, because we are playing in uh, exploration mode in this particular save file, uh, we are going to need to buy some science for that. So uh, to actually be able to build this, we'll need to go to research and development first, and then we're going to buy pretty much all of the uh, flight tech. So we're going to grab light aviation to start off with. And then in level two or tier two, we'll go all. We'll grab all of the uh, tech on the bottom level. So we'll grab precision aerodynamics, Mark II jets, high altitude aviation, and aviation utility. And um, we're also going to grab aerial drones while we're here because we can use the JF-54 uh, drop tanks. But I'm not going to actually be building any drop tanks in this video. I'll do those in the uh, actual uh, mission video. And then in tier 3 we need to make sure we've got large aerodynamics so we have the um, tail connectors and we're also going to buy jumbo jets and we aren't actually going to be using any parts on this for the main build, we're only going to be using the dart engine for the actual uh, mission build because we want to be able to make sure we can land safely at uh, uh, you know, Cappy Rock and then Stargazer Point. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's everything we need to actually build this plane. So let's go back to the uh, BAB and actually get building the uh, F-18. Alright, so we'll start off by going to Command and scrolling down to Cockpits and then grabbing the Mark 1 Peregrine Pot Cockpit. And then for the nose, what we'll do is we'll go to Fuel Tanks, we'll grab the NCS 200 and pop that on there. And then for the actual tip of the nose, we're actually going to use the uh, Air Sniffer Atmospheric Survey. And uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, I personally think it just looks better. And two, we will have an opportunity to do some more science during the uh, Stargazer and Cappy Rock uh, missions. Uh, the uh, curb wide tour missions that's what it is uh, but anyway yeah so for the back of this what we'll do is we'll go to aerodynamics we'll scroll all the way to the bottom and we're going to grab the tail connector b and pop that on the back there however as you can see it's currently not in the correct orientation because we want the flat section of it to be at the bottom so we'll just make sure that that is oriented correctly and now we are on to building the actual main body so for this we'll go to fuel tanks again We'll scroll down to methane and we're going to grab the JFT 400 methane fuel tank. Pop that there. And we're also going to grab the JFT 800 and pop that on the back as well. And then if we scroll back up, we can find the RFADB 400 uh, fuel by, by decoupler. Um, and then we'll pop that on the back there and that'll just give us our mounts for the engines. Uh, but before we put the engines on, we're going to pop another nose cone on the front. So we'll go back to aerodynamics and we're going to grab the Mark II HNC hypersonic nose cone and pop that there. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll use the rotate and translate tool just to move the entire body of the aircraft up. And then make sure that everything is lined up because uh, what we want is we actually want the slope of the tail connector on the cockpit to be just about, about reaching the front of the JFT 400. So we'll move this forwards or sorry backwards even uh, so they are pretty much lined up. And yeah that looks pretty good to me. Uh, so now as I say we want to add some engines so we'll go to engines and we'll scroll down till we reach jet engines and then we're going to use the J44 Panther engine on this. We're going to use radial symmetry to pop two of those on the back there. And of course, because these are jet engines, they do actually need air uh, intakes as well, because otherwise they'll just flame out if we were to try and fly it uh, as it currently is. So for that, we'll first of all go to fuel tanks. Then we'll go down, we're going to grab the JF200 methane fuel tank, and we're going to pop two of these on the side there using the uh, radial symmetry. 
and then in aerodynamics we can go to intakes and we're going to grab the adjustable ramp intake and we're going to pop two of these on the front there and then we're also going to scroll all the way back down to the bottom and grab another tail connector b and pop one of these on the back there and uh, now what we're also going to do is we're going to rotate these um, so we'll use the rotate and translate tool and we're just going to rotate it so it's about 45 degrees so that's about two clicks so yeah now what we can do is we are going to move the entire section inboard and up a little bit but before we do that i'm actually going to rotate the uh the actual air intakes as well so they're lined up with the same rough angle as the side of the actual fuel tank and then like i say we're going to move these in a bit as well i think i'm also going to move them down slightly but we'll just make sure that they are a bit further in and like I said, we'll move them down just so that we've got access to the side of the fuel tanks for our uh, for connecting the wings. And then finally, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the tips of the actual tail connectors aren't sticking out through the engines like that because it looks a bit daft to me. So I'm just going to move it forwards, and like I said, I'm going to move it forwards until the actual tail connector uh, isn't showing up through the um, engine anymore. So there we go, that's that done. <coughs> And now, the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a drogue parachute to this as well. Uh, so now, we could just use the radial drogue parachute. However, I don't personally think it looks as good as the Mark 25 normal parachute. Uh, so to connect this, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to fuel tanks. We're going to go down, we're going to grab another JF200 tank. And we're going to pop one of these on the top there. Um... However, what we want to do is we don't want to be connecting it to the actual tail connector. Uh, I'll just show you what I mean. Uh, we don't want to be connecting it to this um, adapter because you can see it's actually putting it at an angle at the moment. So we're going to make sure it's connected to the main fuel tank. And then that just means it's nice and flat. And of course, we'll go to utility and we'll grab the Mark 25. And we'll pop that on there. And then I'm just going to move this down and back a little bit as well, just so that it looks about right. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that the uh, fuel tank is just going inside of the main tank as well. So I'll turn off snapping. I'm just going to move it down just to the point where it just disappears. And that way we should have a nice flat level. Um, well, yeah, it should be nice and flat between the top there. And then finally what we're going to do is we're just going to move it back a little bit as well. And once again, we don't want it clipping into the engine like that. So we'll just move it so that it's just outside of the engine. And that looks pretty good to me. So yeah, now that is the main body done. Uh, we need to actually start thinking about the main uh, wings and so on. So for that, what we'll do is we'll go to aerodynamics. We'll start off by scrolling down and grabbing the medium wing. And then making sure we have snapping on and our symmetry at radial. We're going to pop two of these on the side there. We're then going to go and grab the uh, small stabilizers. And once again, we're going to connect these to the fuel tank, the FL, uh, the, the, yeah, the 200 fuel tank as opposed to the actual adapter. Because as you can see, when it's connected to the adapter, it's actually uh, angling them inwards a little bit. And we really want them pointed straight forward. So we'll pop, pop them there. And then I'm just going to use the rotate and translate tool just to move them up ever so slightly and then move them out to the side. And then I'm also going to just make sure that they're not floating above the body like that as well. So we'll move it down a little bit. And now these tails, if you've ever seen a picture of an F-18, you'll know that the tail fins are actually quite far forwards as well. So I'm just going to move them a little bit further forwards. And then for the actual um, elevators, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to control surfaces. We're going to use the small uh, control surface. Make sure that snapping is on. We're going to pop two of these on the side there. And the tail, uh, or the elevators are actually quite far back on an F-18. Um, but yeah, so that is the wings in place. So now what we need to do is we actually need to get them into the correct size. So all of the wings on uh, KSP2 are actually procedural, uh, which basically means you can change all of the various different like size parameters of it. So if you mouse over any wing, you can see this little um, spanner icon turns up. Um, so if we hit it there, we can see we have control over the wing span. 
Uh, we also have control over the wing angle, the root length and thickness as well. And same thing for the tip length the, um, and also the control surfaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm not actually going to just use a single wing on this. I'm actually going to use two wings because what I want to do is I want the inner wing to actually have a, um, a flap on it as opposed to a control surface. So I'm going to build the inner wing out and then I'm going to add another little wing on the end uh, with a uh, the actual... Um, uh, pitch control, the uh, ailerons I believe they're called. Um, now if you're not planning on doing that, what you can do is instead you can just get it so that it's at a nice decent looking angle, uh, change the wing span so that it looks about right and then what I'd recommend is actually going down to control surfaces and reducing the span and then using the position marker or um, slider to move them all the way out to the tips of the wings because typically most wings do use the uh, uh, ones on the tips and the reason for that is that you actually it's actually more responsive whereas if for example we had them all the way in like that it wouldn't be quite as responsive so usually you'd find that most planes have the ailerons around the edge of the wings like that uh, but like i say i'm not going to actually be using these as ailerons so i'm going to make sure they are back in the center and i'm also going to make sure the span is all the way up to one and then, like I say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another wing on the side. So uh, I'll do that once I have shaped this. Um, but because it can be a bit faffy and it can take a little while to actually get this right, what I've done is I've actually already created the uh, the, the numbers. I've already created the wings in another save file. So I've got all the numbers on my phone and I'm just going to quickly get the wings shaped and then uh, we'll take you through what to do next once that's done. So uh, yeah, once that is ready, uh, we'll get into the next part of the build. Right, okay, so now that is set, uh, obviously we need to move a couple of things around, um, but if you want to know the various different parameters that I've used for these wings, obviously you could always just slow the video down while I'm doing that, or uh, I am actually going to leave them, uh, this, you know, the numbers in the bio, so please feel free to check that out if you want to actually uh, mimic the wings. But obviously the main thing we need to do first is move the wing tips um, backwards a little bit. So we'll go to the rotate and translate tool, we're going to turn off snapping, and now one thing I find is that when we are trying to adjust wings like this, the highlights around the edges can actually make it quite difficult to um, to judge where, where they are. So a little tip for that is what you can do is you can actually select the arrow that you want to use and then move the cursor away from where you are planning on actually doing the, uh, you know, well, the part you're moving around and then you get a much better idea of the adjustments you're making and you know the gaps that are being left behind uh, so yeah like I said I'm just gonna keep moving them around a little bit just to make sure everything is lined up as I want it to be I'm also gonna just move them in a little bit as well just to get rid of that tiny gap and yeah that looks pretty good to me so that is pretty much all of the wings done and like I say on an F18 you'll find that the wings themselves are actually relatively far back um, the uh, tail um, fins or the rudders are quite far forwards and then the actual tail elevators are quite far back as well so that's already looking pretty good to me um, however we need to start thinking about balancing the aircraft now and what that means is making sure that it will actually fly properly so for that what we can do is we can come down here and we can hit the center of mass and center of pressure buttons and you can see already that the center of pressure is quite far back in relation to the center of mass and ideally what we want is we actually want the center of pressure uh, to be just about a, a, the back of the center of mass ball so typically what we want to do is we want to get the uh, horizontal line there or the vertical line should I say lined up roughly with the vertical uh, or with the back of the center of mass um, now one way to deal with that is if we were to use the 
translate tool we could just move the wings forward and that obviously as you can see moves everything as well uh, however that just doesn't look right to me personally like i say I, I if you look at a picture of an f-18 you'll know that the actual wings are quite far back by comparison so we're going to leave them there and there are a couple of things we can do to try and bring that forward the first thing is we could actually add some wing wing strakes uh, and wing strakes are essentially what gives the F-18 that kind of curved shape at the front. Uh, whereas obviously with this particular build, we don't have wing strakes on it at the minute because it's a nose cone. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add some wing strakes. So for that, we're going to go to stabilizer and we're going to add two of these, but we're actually going to add these onto the leading edge of the actual wing itself uh, because we want to make sure that everything is, um, well, you know, if, if we move the wings around, we want them to actually move properly. So we'll make sure that they are connected there. And uh, I believe, are we using, actually we'll, we'll use the small stabilizers as opposed to the medium ones, or the extra small ones. So yeah, that looks about right to me. And then what I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna rotate them so that they are relatively uh, flat, although I'm actually gonna have them pointed in slightly. Uh, just because that way once we move them inwards the, they're not going to end up sticking out the front of the nose cone and finally we need to actually set these up as well so once again i've already created all of the numbers for this so i'm going to quickly go through that and then once that's done uh, we'll actually start thinking about doing a bit more balancing And then the only other thing we want to do with this is because these aren't actually going to be used as control surfaces, we want to make sure that the control surface is turned off uh, because then it is literally just, as I say, being used as a wing strake and not actually doing anything with regards to controlling the aircraft. But as you can see, now that automatically moved the uh, center of pressure forwards a little bit just by changing the shape of the wings. And you can do that with anything. If you change the wings, it can have a dramatic, a dramatic effect on the center of pressure. Although the problem is you can't actually see that while you are changing the wings. So you need to do the adjustments, uh, then get rid of the procedural window and see what it does. Um, but anyway, the other thing we can do is we can move these forwards as well. And you can see that's bringing it forwards a little bit. Then we'll move them inboard as well so that it's not sticking out quite so far. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the uh, tip of the wing strake is just inside of the actual leading edge of the wing itself. We need to move it in slightly as well. And yeah, that is pretty much bang on what we want actually is that. Um, although I can tell you from my uh, testing that this plane probably isn't going to fly quite as well as I would like it to even though on paper it looks like it would work because like I say the center of pressure is now towards the back of the center of mass um, but most likely what's going to happen is it's actually going to nose down a little bit and what that basically means is that it will pitch down um, automatically so we'll get into that in a moment but the first thing i'm going to do is i'm actually going to move the wings and the tails around a little bit as well because typically and i don't know if this is really you know a major thing in the game however what you don't want is you do not want to have your tail fins in the same line as the actual um wings themselves because what happens is that the wings create turbulence at the back of the wings and that makes the tail actually a lot less efficient so what we're going to do is we are actually going to move the tail or the elevators up a little bit now on an f-18 they are actually below the main wings um so we could try it there but i think it looks a little bit silly and um, plus i'm probably going to be moving the wings down a tad anyway so i'm actually going to just move them upwards so they're a little bit higher than the wings and that just means that like i say you should have clean air flowing over the wings uh, and hitting the tail as opposed to the uh, turbulent air at the back of the wings themselves actually causing issues uh, and what i'm also going to do is i'm just going to move the wing down a little bit as well like you can see because obviously as we move the tail up second i'll just if you if you ever do that you can just delete it in control z and then it'll pop, pop it back where it wants to be but yeah what i'm going to do is i'm just going to move the tail up for a little bit of a demonstration so if you keep an eye on the blue marker what's going to happen is if we move it up you can see it gets higher uh, whereas if we move it down it gets lower and really we want to be trying to have the horizontal line in the blue um, ball lined up roughly with the horizontal line in the orange ball as well or the yellow one so you can play around to your heart's content making sure everything is lined up properly uh, but as long as they're relatively close you should be relatively uh, safe 
But anyway, yeah, let's make sure that everything is set where we want it to be. And that's looking pretty good to me. So the only other thing we need to do before we go for our first test flight is we need to add some wheels and actually set up the control surfaces. So we'll start off by adding the wheels. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to ground. We're going to grab the medium uh, landing gear. We're going to make sure that we have snapping on and that we are at single snapping or single symmetry. And we're going to pop one of these on the bottom of the actual cockpit itself. But you can see it's a little bit... Um, I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move the body of the aircraft down a tiny bit and then back as well. Like I say, making sure that the uh, angled part of the tail connector there is lining up with the uh, front of the main fuel tank. And then what I'm going to do then is, once again, make sure we're on symmetry and I'm going to actually make sure that the wheel is connected to the bottom of the actual um, cockpit as opposed to the nose cone because as you might be able to see it is making it tilt now we could just adjust that but if we've got it on the nose cone then we know it's perfectly flat and we're not going to have any issues and you know what, i'm also going to just move this back a little bit as well Yeah, that looks pretty good to me and now we are going to add the uh, rear wheels now what we could do is we could add them straight onto the wings and although that would work the problem is we are going to be moving the wings around a little bit and that would obviously adjust the um, wheels as well and also when doing that quite often you'll find that the wheels might not be pointed perfectly forwards uh, which can cause issues so if you find when you are on the runway that it's suddenly like slewing left or right then that probably means that the wheels are actually like at some kind of an angle. So what I'm actually going to do, just to make sure that we don't affect the wheels while we are adjusting the wings and so that they're nice and uh, flat, we're actually going to connect them to these fuel tanks here. And that way we know that they are going to be pointed straight forwards instead of, as I say, pointed like outwards like that or inwards, uh, which we don't want. Uh, and then all we need to do then is just move them outwards a little bit and move them up. And that way we'll actually have uh, the wheels roughly where we want them to be. And then the only other thing with regards to the wheels we want to make sure we do is we want to make sure that the rear wheels, uh, the actual suspension arm there, is just behind the centre of mass. Because if it's forward of the centre of mass like that, then the weight is behind the wheel, so you'll end up doing a wheelie on the runway and you won't be able to take off. And if the uh, wheels are quite far behind the centre of mass, then once again you'll struggle to take off because you want to be pivoting around the actual centre of weight. So we'll make sure that they are set properly. That was the wrong arrow. And like I say, we just want to make sure that they are just behind the actual uh, centre of mass itself. See, that looks pretty good to me. So yeah, now I think we are ready to go for our first test flight. So before we do that, there is one last thing I am going to do. And I'm actually going to paint the plane because obviously it kind of looks like an F-18. Uh, but we want it to actually look like an F-18. So for that, we'll go to Colour Manager. And we're just going to make sure that the accent and base are both grey. So we'll click down here. And then we'll go to accent and we'll click in roughly the same place. And then if we cycle between the two, you can see that the little uh, dot is moving around a little bit. So we can move it around just to get it nice and accurate. And they don't have to be exact. As long as they are close, then uh, it should be relatively you know, close. Uh, but yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that we are set to... It's not close yet because I keep on messing it up. Uh, we'll make sure that we are set to assemble it. And then if we click on the plane, it now looks like it has the stealth, stealth paint that all fighter jets have these days. So yeah, that is, um, like I say, how to make a plane look like an F-18. Uh, but will it actually fly like an F-18? So the first thing we'll do then is we'll go to, uh, well, we'll make sure the actual staging stack is set. So we want to put the drogue parachute in stage two. And then, yeah, let's go to the runway and actually do a test flight. Although I have to remember one thing that I forgot to do with regards to the wheels, but we'll fix that in a moment. Ooh, you can see the wheels might be a little bit far back there, although it could be something to do with the suspension, because as you can see, it's bouncing all over the place. So to fix that, what we really want to be doing is we want to be uh, increasing the damper and spring strength, just to make sure that it doesn't bounce too much. Like I say, we will fix this when we actually get into the um, get back into the 
VAB. And then the other thing we also want to do is we want to make sure that the front wheel is doing no braking, so we'll turn off the braking power, and the rear wheels aren't steering. Uh, because if we're steering with the rear wheels we can lose control quite easily um, and if we brake with the front wheel then we can actually you know flip over forwards when we're landing uh, but we'll fix that properly when we actually get into the um, VAB and now the first thing you can see is that if we were to use the controls you can see that all of the control surfaces are actually doing the same thing um, which we don't really want so yeah I think what I'm going to do then is I'm, before we even take off I'm actually going to go straight back to VAB and just fix that so we'll start off by sorting out the wheels so as I say we want to set up the suspension so we'll just max these out for the time being and uh, see how it fares when we land obviously the harder they are uh, the bouncier it can be when landing if you do a hard landing um, but yeah, we'll just do that, and like I say, with the rear wheels, we don't want those to be steering. And with the front wheel, we don't want that to be braking. So we'll make sure braking power is at 0%, and like I say, the rear wheels have the steering enabled turned off. And then with regards to the control surfaces, what we want to do is, uh, obviously we want to be setting them up so that the tips of the wings are doing the actual pitch, or the roll, sorry. Uh, so we'll right click on that, we'll hit advanced controls and we'll turn off pitch and yaw. And then for the inner part of the wings, these, these like I said are actually going to be um, flaps. So we actually want to go to advanced controls and turn all of these off. And then we're actually going to hit the deploy and you can see it's actually deploying upwards. So we want to be inverting the deploy direction as well. So uh, we'll do that with the deploy angle by going to minus 15. And that's that set and then for the uh, rear uh, elevators we want to be using these just for pitch and then for the actual um, uh, rudders we want those to be just controlling yaw so we'll make sure that those are set so like I say the tips of the wings are controlling roll the uh, elevators are controlling pitch and the rudders are controlling the yaw so yeah, that's pretty pretty good to me. Um, I think that's pretty much everything we want to do. Although there is one extra thing I am going to add before we go into a fly. I'm actually going to add a air brake as well. Um, so we'll go to aerodynamics. We'll scroll down and we'll find the air brake. We're going to pop one of these on here. And now F18s typically either have an air brake at the front or an air brake at the back. But I'm going to pop pop this one at the back like that. And then if we hit deploy. We can see it's deploying at 90 degrees and I don't really like that so I'm going to just roll it down or move it down a little bit so that it's a little bit, a little bit more of an angle. So we'll go to about 55% and now we can close that back up again and now what happens is when we hit the brakes the actual um, air brake will deploy and I don't particularly want that to happen so I'm actually going to set up a few action groups while we're here. So if we're going to action groups the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to custom 1 and for this we're actually going to set the engines up because these engines can have both cruise mode and afterburner mode so in um, custom one we're going to hit the cycle mode button and like i say when we hit one on our keyboards that just means we'll be able to cycle between cruise mode and afterburner then in custom two we will go to aero and we're actually going to set this up with the flaps so for that we need to find the correct wings so it is that one there and that one there and if we were to just go toggle control surface deploy it doesn't actually do anything so we need to set the uh, deploy directions up um, individually so we're actually going to set custom 2 up as retract the control surface and then in custom 3 we're actually going to do that for deploy control surface and that just means that now once we press 3 we'll be able to uh, deploy the flaps and then We'll press 4 to, uh, or 2 to um, retract them. And then finally in custom 4, we're going to go to the air brakes. And we're going to just hit toggle control surface for that one. And then we're also going to just go into brakes and go back down to air brakes and turn the uh, control deploy off. So yeah, that's all of the actual 
action group set I believe so now we can actually do our first flight so yeah let's quickly save this so we make sure we've actually got what we want I'm just going to quickly save it as a new workspace and then yeah if we hit launch we can actually go and try and fly we'll make sure the brakes are set so we don't start rolling away to be honest, I'm looking at those wing strakes and I feel like they could do with going in a little bit, but I'll fix that in a moment. Uh, but yeah, let's do our first flight. So we will activate the engines. And then, as I say, if I was to press 1, it will actually activate the, uh, the afterburners. And then we can press B to disengage the brakes and uh, start our takeoff run. So I usually like to take off when the velocity reaches around about 100 meters per second. So we'll start our pitch up now. See, we're up in the air, although automatically I can see that what's happening is we're actually uh, struggling to keep level flight there. So we will retract the landing gear. And one thing I like to do is if we look at the nav ball, we want to try and see where our level indicator is in relation to the actual uh, prograde marker. And we are pointed up to the top at the minute, which isn't. 100% ideal. Uh, the other thing we can do is if we zoom into the actual tail, you can see that the tail is actually pitching down slightly or is pointing down and that means that, like I say, it means we're probably going to be nosing down. So if we press T on the keyboard to disengage SAS, you can see we're starting to nose down here, uh, which is less than ideal. And the reason that is important is even though once we have SAS on, it's uh, nice and stable. If we were to now try and actually, you know, roll the aircraft, what's going to happen is every time we roll, the nose is going to start moving down. And personally, I like to actually fly my airplanes without SAS on. So we can fix that in a couple of ways. We could fix it in flight by using um, uh, pitch trim. And to do pitch trim, you just hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and then use the S key to either pitch upwards or the uh, you know the W key to pitch downwards but of course in this one we want to be pitching upwards obviously uh, with that it's just a matter of balancing it um, and making sure that we're not going too far in either direction and then once we actually start rolling we're not going to be uh, nosing down which is uh, what we want although like I say personally I prefer to actually uh, set this up in the um, VAB so we'll do that in a second uh, but just before we do that, if you will, I have done any like pitch trim, so for example you can do roll trim and yaw trim as well. Although I wouldn't recommend doing that because it's very difficult to actually get a stable um, you know, trim. What you can do is if you hold down Alt and press X, that will uh, reset all of the trim. It also turns off the engines, but you just need to press Z to re reset the engines up to full. Um, but anyway, yeah, so like I say, what we're going to do then is if we check out the angle that the actual tail is sitting at, so it's sitting just a little bit down, we can go back to the VAB and actually uh, try and pitch that in the VAB. So yeah, the first thing I'm going to do then is I'm just going to adjust these wing strakes a little bit because like I say, it doesn't quite look right to me, doesn't that? So we'll use the Rotate and Translate tool just to rotate them in a little bit and then move them more inboard. And this shouldn't really affect the aerodynamics that much uh, because the, you know, even though it's only a tiny little bit sticking out, we've still got the whole wing. And you can actually clip wings into aeroplanes air, to uh, adjust the aerodynamic effects. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that looks a bit better to me now. So we'll have a look at our um, adjustments. And well, like I said, what we want to do is we want to be pitching the actual tail forwards a little bit. And this is something that I like to do on all of my aircraft, just to try and get it a bit more balanced. Uh, but we're going to make sure that we are doing it without the snapping on, because we want to be only moving it a tiny little bit. Like I said, we'll pitch it down ever so slightly. But as you can see, as we do that, it is actually changing the position of the uh, actual centre of pressure. And the thing is the more like the bigger the adjustments you do the more it affects the center of pressure which is why you only want to be doing very little adjustments um so yeah anyway like i say we'll make sure that it's pitched down a little bit and then another way another thing we can do is we can actually um counteract that by doing the same thing with the wings uh, but what i would do with the wings is I'd actually pitch them up a little bit so i'm going to do that 
like I said, that is going to bring the center of pressure forwards again. And it also will add a little bit more lift as well, which makes it slightly more stable during flight. Uh, because as you saw in the test, we were pointed ever so slightly up on the actual level indicator on the you know in relation to the um, prograde marker and we want to be trying to get as close to the center of the prograde marker as we can um, but yeah that looks pretty good to me and there's just one other thing I'll mention with regards to wings as well uh, what you might find is a lot of planes actually have their wings either tilted up like that or down and what that does is if you have it tilted down like it currently is that actually reduces stability and makes it more maneuverable so you'll find fighter aircraft often have their um, wings tilted down a little bit like that uh, the best example i can think of is the hawker harrier um, jump jet which does that so um but yeah like i say we'll make sure it's just pitched down a little bit just so that we are tilted down a little bit so that we've got a bit more kind of maneuverability and we're going to do the same with the tail as well um Whereas if we were to actually pitch them upwards, what would happen then is it would actually create a more stable aircraft. So if you want in a stable aircraft that isn't very manoeuvrable, um, like an airliner for example, then I would recommend actually you know, pitching you, the tips of your wings up slightly. Whereas if you're doing a fighter aircraft like this, then pitch it down. And like I say, pitching it down does just make it a little bit kind of more manoeuvrable. Um, the only other thing I'm also going to do while we're here is I'm going to check out the height of the wheels. Because what we want to be doing with wheels is we ideally, well, most people you might see uh, will say that you want the front wheel and the back wheel to be either lined up perfectly, so we'd want to move the front wheel down, or we sometimes you might see people saying that you want the front wheel um, even lower than the back wheels because that'll give you more lift during takeoff. However, what I normally like to do is I actually normally like to have the front wheel a little bit higher than the back wheel, so. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to use the rotate and translate tool and I'm just going to move the front wheel down a little bit. I think I'm also going to move the back wheels up ever so slightly as well, just so that the front wheel is just a little bit higher. And that way, when we are landing, uh, we, we know that the front or the rear wheels should always be touching the ground first, which is generally what you want when you are uh, when you try to land an aer aeroplane. Uh, but like I say, you can actually do all of these adjustments to your heart's content. You can take hours doing this. Um, but I think that's pretty much everything we need to do. Uh, all we're going to do now is we're just going to go for another test flight just to make sure everything's set. The centre of pressure is nicely at the back of the centre of mass. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So let's go for another flight test and hopefully this should be uh, pretty much done now. Right, so we'll start off by activating the brakes so we don't roll forwards too far. And we'll activate the engines. And uh, once we get up to power, we can turn off the brakes and uh, start our run up to uh, take off. And one thing I'd recommend is when doing a flight, I'd actually recommend using the mouse look control as well. And to do that, you just need to press the tab button on your keyboard. It just mean, means it's easy to look around. So yeah, now we are getting up towards 100, or 100 meters per second. We can start our pitch up. And we can see automatically that that is actually much better. It's not nosing down anywhere near as much as it was. And the tail isn't actually pitching up too much either, or pitching down. Um, however, one thing you'll notice is the faster we get, the more the tail actually is starting to level out. So you can see it's starting to come down. And what that basically does is, um, well, eventually, once we go over a certain speed, it'll actually start to go the opposite way. So that's not too bad, that. But it just means now that if we are to roll the aircraft, we're not nosing down anywhere near as much and it's much more controllable and if we actually turn off the SAS you can see that it's now almost perfectly stable. So yeah that's pretty good is that. Uh, so let's actually try out the manoeuvrability of this so we'll try a roll. That's not too bad. Uh, if you want, I mean it probably could roll faster. Uh, one thing we could do to fix that is we could either increase the length of the actual um, elevators or the ailerons. Uh, or we could actually just set the tail up so that, that will control roll as well. Yeah, that's much more like it. So I might even set this plane up like that. So we'll do a uh, roll off the top. Once again, that's not 100%, although these tail fins are actually at the max authority limiter. 
Um, I mean, what that basically means is, for example, let's say if you are find that you know adjusting the pitch is too responsive, what you can do is you can right-click on the tail, and you can actually turn the authority limiter down. Obviously, at zero means that absolutely nothing is happening now. Uh, whereas if we go to about 10%, then it'll only be uh, actually pitching half the amount. Uh, but because this is a fighter, we're going to leave it at full anyway. Uh, but yeah, let's have a little fly around the uh, space center and have a look and see what this is all about. See, we have the large Tylo lander on the pad. Just to get an idea of the scale. It looks like some parts of it are actually missing. It looks like the uh, Kraken had a bit of a meal while it was waiting there. But this looks pretty good to me. Yeah, I'm quite happy with this. So I think what I'm going to do then is I'm actually going to just fly out a little bit further and then I'm going to try a landing as well and see how that fares. I'm not going to fly under any bridges or anything on this because... I'm not very good at it and I'd probably end up crashing and I want to actually test it uh, during the landing so yeah we'll get ourselves uh, going away from the runway so we can do a turn and then actually start coming in towards the runway and typically when you are trying to land if you've ever played a flight simulator you'll know that you want to be coming in quite low towards the uh, actual runway you don't want to be coming in too high so we're going to do a, a hard bank I'm also going to turn off the um, afterburners. And then, like I say, we want to be coming in nice and low. So we'll make sure that we are lined up with, I think it is runway 27 left that we're coming into here. And now I'm going to extend the landing gear, turn off the engines. I'm also going to hit three on the keyboard to extend our flaps. If we want to, we can even extend the air brakes as well. And now, typically when you are coming in for a landing, what you want to be doing is you want to be levelling out just above the runway because you want to essentially, like I say, have your rear wheels touching the ground first. Uh, but what you can do is you can level out and then as your plane slows, it will come down nice and soft. And uh, that was a little bit bouncy. It wasn't the best landing in the world. That probably means that the actual... Um, um, spring strength is a bit too high on the wheel so I'll probably turn that off I'm also going to test the drogue shoe yeah, that seems to be working quite nicely and now let's see what the brakes do as well so I'll go full brakes and see what happens so you can see it's a little bit bouncy and usually when you are braking for a landing it's best just to tap the brakes and that way you're going to slow yourself down nice and steadily and you're less likely to actually uh, you know, pitch over forwards and end up uh, crashing and killing your Kerbal. But yeah, that looks pretty good to me, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, the only thing I think I might do then is I might just adjust the wheels um, damper strength. And I'm also going to add a ladder as well underneath the cockpit. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything there is for this build. So, uh, like I say, I'm going to be taking this plane to the Cappy Rock mission. I'm probably also going to do the Stargazer Point mission in the same video as well, which I'm planning on doing in the next day or two. So please feel free to check those out once I've, once I've released them. Um, but hopefully you learnt a few things on how to build aeroplanes. Like I said, there's just a few little techniques that I always use when building planes, such as watching the tail during the test flight just to try and see how much we need to actually pitch it forwards, and also adjusting the wings and you know the angle of the wings just to give it either more stability or more uh, manoeuvrability. But yeah, that's like I say everything there is. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, then I'd really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.